Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so welcome back to the third part of lecture 18. Um, we are going to now, you know, specify the endogenous uh, social effects in a spatial regression model. And till now, you know, we have learned how to specify spatial dependence in a regression model through, you know, spatial weights. So we are going to specify the regression model using the spatial weights and then, you know, adapt Mansky's reflection problem onto the spatial, uh, you know, uh, regression model. And then finally, as part of this lecture, we are going to provide the fixes for uh, this purpose. So let's think about, let's think about the, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, the groundwater data that we have, uh, you know, uh, worked with till now. So let's say this is, there is a spatial domain of interest as exhibited in front of your screen and I am interested at of you know in explaining the groundwater uh, you know depletion of groundwater depth at each location i in the domain of interest at any given point of time. So I have a model g i is equal to I am going to use spatial weights to specify a spillover effect. So the point that I'm trying to make is that all the values in its neighborhood is going to have a spillover effect on the groundwater levels at location i. Of course, the level, the, the degree of spillovers can vary by the location of the neighbors, okay? So all the dots in this sample will have, you know, contributed to the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the the, the, the level of groundwater at location i. So g i is written to be equal to rho, which is a coefficient of summation j equals 1 to n w i j g j, okay? j being, you know, the lag. Now, uh, we are going to use, you know, rho standardized weights. That is to say that w i j tilde is w i j over summation j w i j. This is just to ensure that summation j w tilde i j will always be equal to 1, right? So this is going to be the case. Plus some other factors, you know, let us say beta uh, uh, 1, so I am including the intercept beta 1 plus beta 2. Uh, sorry, let us just say beta 1 x 1 i, beta 2 x 2 i and so on till beta k x k i plus u i. This is the regression model that we are used to, okay? In the matrix form, we can write this as g rho w g plus x beta where x will be a k by 1, sorry, n by k and k beta will be a k by 1 vector plus u which is n by 1 vector, g is n by 1 vector and so is this one, that is it, right? So beta and rho are both, uh, you know, uh, 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 model parameters. Now rho is specifying, rho specifies the effect on location i due to its neighbors, uh, you know, j. Now the reflection problem will suggest that first of all, what we are as an analyst, as an econometrician, as a statistician, as a researcher, as an analyst, you will be, what you are going to exhibit, what you are going to see is that data is exhibiting a pattern. That is to say that, you know, there are going to be clusters where groundwater depth will be very, you know, will be very high. So the groundwater situation will be very bad. 
you know, let's say in one cluster, it's an urban area, you have very low, you know, values of groundwater levels. And towards the east, you know, in this direction, these groundwater levels are not so bad, you know, they are, they are fine. So what's happening obviously is that if I focus on any value in the, you know, uh, north, uh, uh, you know, west cluster, I'm going to have, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some kind of a spillover going onto this location I. What I don't know is that whether or not this location itself is also exhibiting a equal or stronger spillover on all its neighbors. So when we see average neighborhood effect, average neighborhood level groundwaters, right? So this is average, right? It's a weighted average. So WG is a weighted average. So it's average neighborhood groundwater level. And this is, you know, individual well level groundwater situation, groundwater depth. Let's just call it depth in both situations, okay? What we cannot ascertain by this, but just by just specifying the model in the way we have, is that whether or not we can expect to have some effect of individual wells on all the wells in its neighborhood. This type of a, you know, intuitive understanding will also apply on housing prices. If I'm looking at a home or a house which has a high price and it's clustered with other high priced homes or houses, then, you know, we don't really know whether, you know, we are seeing the reflection of this house, how the price of this particular house on, you know, in terms of what's happening in the neighborhood or this house itself is simply mirroring what's happening in its neighborhood. So what, who is affecting whom? Well, what happens, you know, generally in the real world is everybody is affecting everybody else. When we are talking about groundwater data, you know, the groundwater as we have looked at, you know, extensively, they are connected through aquifers. And so long as these aquifers beneath the ground are connected, the wells that we see that we dig, dig from the ground, if, if they go on into, you know, the same aquifer, uh, you know, uh, a cross section, then the levels that we observe are going to be definitely connected with each other. We can't just ascertain simply by specifying G equals rho WG as a single directional or unidirectional effect. There's circularity there which we cannot, you know, circumvent, right? And if you think about it, this WG, which is nothing but, you know, some kind of a weighted average is an analog of expected value of y given x in Mansky's, uh, you know, notation. Okay, so what we are looking at here is a endogenous, you know, social effects problem playing out in spatial, uh, you know, uh, regression models. Okay. And it's quite parallel. So then, you know, we can, one can use Mansky's framework. So if you read Mansky's paper, Mansky provides constraints for parameters, some conditions for finding instruments in order to, you know, ensure that one can infer upon an effect of the neighborhood, uh, you know, scale of outcome onto the individual outcome at every location in a spatial data set. Okay. Now, um, so, so now the next step is reconciling this spatial endogeneity. The first fix that I am presenting to you is coming from Luke Anselin. Luke Ansel is, is the is, 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 is professor at uh, you know uh, of, of spatial econometrics who, who is perhaps the father of spatial econometrics who, who provided us this idea of spatial weights and uh, you know weights matrices. Anselin says that weights matrix, base spatial lag is not group mean. Remember, we looked at this idea of a window, moving window average, right? So moving average window, right? In this moving average, what we learned was the difference between a time series moving average window and a spatial moving average window is that WII is zero. That is to say the mean, the center point of this average moving average window is not counted. So what Anselin is trying to say here mathematically is that the 
the effect Wg which is the spatial lag, the spatial lag defined using the weights matrix is not equal to expectation y given x, right? Is or let us say is not equal to expectation g given, you know, some x. Because you are not accounting a location i is not her own neighbor. So, every location is not their own neighbor. They are not accounted for while calculating this average, this group average. The individual is not counted when we are calculating the group average. So, the problem of endogenous social effects were arising due to this term is does not exist is what Anselin's argument is, is that the spatial lag regression is still identified even though this troubling, uh, you know, uh, uh, revelation due to the endogenous, uh, you know, uh, uh, spatial effects or social effects, okay. Now, this argument has been critiqued uh, by Gibbons and Overman. Um, in a highly cited paper called Mostly Pointless Spatial Econometrics, right? Now this, the argument that Gibbons and Overman are, pro, are, pro, are presenting is as follows. They are suggesting that causal inference, this idea of ceteris paribus or, or causal inference is achieved by controlling for economic channels of effect. In the sense that unless you understand what is the channel of effect, you can't really ascertain a causal inference. You can't really get to the point what is this channel of, you know, coming from the left hand side to right hand side, okay. And merely by, you know, uh, by, uh, you know, uh, 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 using these geographic weights, which are, which are only an index of who is near me in terms of my geography, in terms of my location is not going to be sufficient in order to account for the economic channels of endogeneity, right? So, if you are not able to account for the economic channels of endogeneity, then, you know, a weights matrix based, uh, you know, argument that just because mathematically, you know, WG is not equal to an expectation, a moving average expectation spatially, that does not suffice the fact that it is going to now identify causal inference just because we have not quite done that, right? Um, uh, this is a very good paper, one can, one can, you, you must read this paper, but the point is that the Anselin's argument may not be sufficient and there are, you know, in, in practice what we find is that people do not just stop at spatial lag mo uh, models and say they are identified automatically, right? People do more than that. And one of the things that is done more is what is called as the instrumental variable approach. Here I have provided you an example paper which is uh, using the instrumental variable approach in order to, uh, you know, account for endogenous social effects in a, uh, you know, uh, in a spatial regression model, okay? I am going to go over this idea of an instrumental variable approach uh, in very briefly because of the, uh, because of lack of time, but you can go back and study uh, instrumental variables and instrumental variable approach for uh, identifying endogenous uh, you know, effects in general, not just endogenous spatial effects in Woolridge's book, okay? So, uh, I'm going to go over the instrumental variable approach very, very briefly as follows. So, so I'm going to provide steps in case, steps for the IV estimation approach. Step one is find regressors or variables, independent variables or covariates, find regressors or independent variables or covariates that are likely correlated likely correlated with the group effects, but not correlated with the individual, uh, you know, decision or 
outcome yi right so we want to find variables we want to understand we want to seek out some deep, some explanatory variables which will affect the group effect so group effects are nothing but expectation y given x something that is happening at the group level in a spatial neighborhood or in general in a peer network or wherever right we want regressors that are correlated with the group effects but not correlated with the individual decision right so let's say you know we call these variables li's okay so i'm just i'm using just the term li just to sort of say this is one of the variable one such variable such that the correlation of li with expectation of y given x x being g right you can use you can also call it g because it's a group effect then this will be non zero and the correlation of li with individual effect is zero that is to say that li will impact yi only through the group effect okay so we are after this regression yi equals you know alpha plus beta expectation y given and g right so y uh, okay, let me just clean this up a little bit y equals this plus let's say eta z plus u okay and i am interested in beta as an analyst so i want to find a variable l which is correlated with expectation y given g but uncorrelated with y that is to say that the only way l will impact y is through g then i will go to my next step step 2 and i will say run an auxiliary react auxiliary regression also known as the first stage or the first first stage regression so you will run this estimate this regression model even before you are estimating your parent model or the model of interest okay the model of or a primary model what whichever name suits your your you know uh, is favorable in your uh, opinion right so the first stage model will be that i will go ahead and i will regress these average group effects which is nothing but expectation y given g on beta 0 or not beta let's use a different notation gamma 0 plus gamma 1 l plus epsilon okay so i'm going to now regress these neighborhood level variables on to this uh, this instrument l okay these are instrument okay and then i'm going to get my you know i'm going to get my obtain your gamma 0 hat and gamma 1 hat and hence you're going to get your y bar hat which is nothing but gamma 0 hat plus gamma 1 hat l you know i okay and then in step 3 we run this parent regression y i equals alpha plus beta and we replace y bar g with y bar hat g that is the predicted value in the first stage regression this step 3 is called as the second stage regression so you are now conducting the same analysis in two stages this is also called as the two stage least squares method right this is also called as aka 2 sls method remember in this lecture i am not doing a good job in terms of explaining what a two stage least squares method is but you have all the tools to learn what it is and i encourage you strongly to go back to the woolridge's book and study what a two stage least squares method is it is very general it is very powerful it is used you know a lot in econometrics research okay plus we have eta z plus u okay 
Now, by using this, we will be able to identify theta, that is the endogenous social effect. So, we are able to reconcile the issue, the reflection problem that Mansky is raising because we are not using y bar. So, I am just defining expectation y given g as y bar g just to represent, you know, group level, group level average of the outcome. Okay. So, uh, let me just, okay, uh, y given g, I am defining this as y bar g just as a just to represent group level average, okay. Now the point that I am making here is that instead of using the raw group level data, we use it as a function of an auxiliary variable Li which does not directly impact Yi, okay. So we are trying to reroute the problem of, you know, endogenous social effects. We are trying to sort of get away with it. Because we have not used y bar g in its original form, we have also bypassed or we have sort of, you know, uh, 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 you know, just uh, avoided the issue of endogeneity, right. So, I am not going to call this an endogenous effect anymore. You know, beta is, of course, you know, it is, it is going to be the social effect that I am after. So, it is, it is indeed an endogenous social effect. So, you know, beta hat will, will represent that, okay. So, this is the second fix that I am, uh, you know, proposing in this lecture. The third one comes from, again, a, a very good paper by Brock, uh, William Brock and Stephen Durloff, wherein, you know, uh, they are suggesting that instead of using yi in the left hand side as a linear, in their linear form, if we use a nonlinear form of it, that is to say, that if we were to model h of y i as, you know, the average level effect, then we will not have the endogenous social or reflection problem as provided by Mansky. It is mainly driven by the linearity. So, I can have alpha plus u. You can read this paper, it is it's mainly for binary outcome variables, but it sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, also is a uh, way to reconcile the endogeneity problem, okay. So, with this, we are, we are coming to the uh, close of, uh, you know, to, to a close of, of lecture 18, but by lecture 18, we have now relaxed assumption A2 and assumption A3, and we have provided ways to estimate the models when these two classical assumptions of the regression model fail for the spatial uh, data sets, okay. So, thank you very much for your attention. In the next lecture, coming lectures, we are going to spend more time with the spatial lag model, the spatial autoregressive, mod, uh, cross-regressive model, the SLX model, the spatial error model, and we will study a bit of hypothesis testing with them, right. Uh, after that, we will move on to the hands-on exercise with ArcGIS and on our studio, okay. So, thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.